Hi there, it's Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't talked to you in a while, at least not directly. I've been showing a lot of uh, different demos of things that I've been working on, including my latest game, Cavi's Quest. And we'll have a my next video will be going a bit more into what I'm doing there and uh, some of the other things going on in my channel. But today we're going to be talking about just some very basic ways of how do you create an application for the Commander X16 in the first place? Uh, I know I haven't gone into a whole lot of what that process is like, and, and today I want to sort of rectify that. A lot of folks out there are really confused. Uh, they, they don't know how to get started, and uh, they're afraid they're never going to progress beyond basic. And, and I'm here to show you that it's really not that hard. You get the right tools in place, and you can do it pretty easily. And here we're going to show how we use CC65 as a cross-development toolchain uh, to build Commander X16 applications on a modern computer. So I call this uh, presentation and this video Hello CC65 because we're just going to do Hello World with CC65. So, well, first, but how would we do it otherwise? Well, we could use BASIC, but it's, BASIC's just so basic. It's nice that it's interactive. It's got a simple syntax. You can see here, it doesn't get any more simple for a syntax. Just 10 print, hello world, and there's your whole program. It's done. You type run, and there it is. Instant gratification. And it's built right into that ROM. But, uh, man, those hard-coded line numbers, you can't get around that, can you? Even here in this simplest program, you still got to have that line number to make it work. Now, of course, a lot of more modern basic environments don't require line numbers because you can just have that in some sort of text editor or IDE and it just uh, I'll let you do whatever you want and copy and paste stuff but within this Commander X16 basic you're still dealing with those line numbers because it's all to work with that interactive shell and once you get to the point of having to copy and paste code around you, you can't really do it. You're renumbering all the time or you're adding go-tos to make this insane just nightmare of uh, spaghetti code. It's just insurmountable. And then, of course, you got limited features. You can only do so much with BASIC. Uh, you have a, a pretty good collection of... Uh, different language features in there. Of course, you got that whole Commander uh, X16 Basic, which is based on the Commodore Basic uh, version 2. And so you've got all those commands in there, but you've got some additional commands for the Commander X16 to take uh, advantage of some additional features. But it's still not everything. And it's not always easy to do it in Basic. And you're going to end up doing a lot of peeking and poking in order to start like really dealing with video memory and some of the other hardware features. It, it just it becomes just too difficult to do in BASIC. And of course you're going to have a monolithic structure to your program. It's going to be one big BASIC program. You it, it makes it hard to sort of separate data from your code. You can't do things modularly and link them together. You, you've really just got to have this one big mamma jamma of a program. It's just too, too hard to do things in an intelligent way when they all have to be in this one giant monolith. And then finally, even once you get this, you know, exquisitely crafted monolith out there with everything that you need, at the end of the day, it's so slow. Oh my God, is basic so slow? Even on the Commander X16 with an 8 megahertz processor and all this RAM, it's you still can't get over the speed factor. And, and there's there's a few reasons for this. So the most obvious one being that, of course, BASIC is an interpreted language. Now, sure, you you type a line of code out, and it, it that's not what it stores. It stores a tokenized version of it, so it's not having to do all that text processing at runtime, but it still has to go through those uh, binary tokens and then go and execute something. It's not automatically compiling that to the machine code. So you have that level of indirection making it slow. But then the real culprit is how it deals with numbers. And of course, it's a computer program. There's a lot of numbers in it. But you can't just have a native integer number, even though this is a 6502 uh, processor with no floating point support. And in fact, you don't have arithmetic support outside of addition, subtraction, and shifting. So 
every numerical operation is super slow where you're going from the text version into a floating point and doing floating point operations and then printing it back out and it is just super super slow the simplest things like one plus one equals two you can't do that without having to go through this whole rigmarole of converting and deconverting from floating point it, it just you, you you really have a hard time trying to make anything performative out of basic so we need something better we need something like a compiler enter cc65 it is a complete 6502 tool chain uh, for not just the 6502 but for the whole the whole family of processors that are uh, based on that same architecture it's free and open source you go right to github you can uh, clone it you know fork it whatever you want to do and you can just build it yourself and it's great it works on a lot of different platforms uh, including windows linux even a raspberry pi you could probably get it to work on and you got support for all these uh, legacy systems so many different 6502 based systems going back to the apple II and uh through the 70s 80s and even into the 90s with the super nintendos based on the 65 uh, 816 so it, it has support for all those and and including even new systems based on 6502 uh, processors like the commander x16 the supports built right into it and you can go ahead and code in C in assembly or both within your a single application and so we're going to be talking about the the different tools that you use within CC65 the first one being CC65 itself which is the C compiler and then CA65 is the uh, 6502 assembler that comes with it and then finally the LD65 which is a uh, linker so the object files that you build from that source code you can link them together to create your final application so if you're to do c that would be the next step after basic you're getting closer to the hardware you're able to compile to machine code but you still have some of the nice expressions that you get with c you can make things look more like math and so what you get is not just the c language itself but a pretty good subset of that C library you get all those standard IO functions like printf and fopen uh, the string library all, all the things that you would expect in a, in a fairly simple C program are going to be available to you you know within reason for what you can run on a 6502 and then you have additional platform specific libraries including ones especially for the commander x16 that gives you access to the uh, kernel functions and uh, other different capabilities of the machine so it, it really provides a lot of nice capability for you and then you can compile that c code either to assembly and or you can go right into machine code if you just have a, a single source code application just a simple main pro uh, function you can build that directly to a machine code program and run it right away really easy and then within your c code if you want to speed things up a little bit you can just drop a little assembly right in there uh, if something's kind of hard to express and see in any sort of efficient way just go ahead and drop the assembly right in the middle of that c code and then you can also use uh, things like macros and optimization uh, things to either make your program either run faster or be smaller whatever the need is for what you're trying to do you can make it fit into the time and space that you need it to but then you get down to assembly you want to get right down at that hardware and cc cc65 is right there for you you can have support for pretty much every 6502 variant that's out there including the 65 co2 that the commander x16 runs on and even the 65 816 like with the super nintendo it's sort of a hybrid 816 bit but you have full support for that as well and then you have platform specific support even within assembly you have include files that uh, give you access to uh, different locations and features and macros and things and uh, but what we'll see in my example is a uh, uh this six uh, commander x16 uh, assembly include file that uh, i use for my projects and i i think it is works out really nice and we'll take a look at that today 
And then you can actually segment your program up uh, with a very precise configuration of putting different segments in different parts of memory and really being able to either have a bits of code and data be absolutely located at a specific address or it's just sort of relatively located within these different segments. It really makes it both uh, easy and precise to get your code and data where it needs to be. And then finally, like any good modern assembler, you have an extensive macro capability so that your assembly code doesn't have to look so much like assembly language. You can do things with macros that have arguments and you can just sacrifice uh, having a uh, Having code that is called over and over again, it takes up a bit more pro, uh, more code space, but it's uh, a lot faster to run, and it makes the code a lot easier to read and write. So a lot of real good things there with assembly. And then finally, you can just mix it up. You want to write some in C, write some assembly, you know, compile each of them, link them together. You can make parts of it into libraries that you can reuse in other uh in different applications and finally if you have some sort of legacy environment where you have this existing 6502 code if it can be uh if it's uh sitting around in an 065 format uh, say if it's a dynamic library you can take that and just convert it and statically link it with what you're doing or if you have a closed source library, you don't have that assembly anymore, you can do that conversion, or you don't want to have to refactor some assembly code that was written for another environment. If you can get it to 065, you can get it into the CC65 environment. I'm not going to go any more into that, but you can see that it, CC65 is not just good for beginning in there, but it's, it's good for transitioning out of other uh, development environments and, and really making a nice tool set. So let's take a look here at the most basic sort of program we can have in C. Now, if you've ever done any sort of programming course before, you recognize this. It's Hello World. And like with basically any sort of uh, C library, C environment that you need, you want standard io.h to be included, and you have a main function. And then that main function will call the good old printf function. And the printf, you can just pass that string, and then it can have other arguments to go into the string. But in this case, we just want hello world. And there it is. That's your whole program. Now, I could take this verbatim. I, this will work on pretty much any platform that has a C compiler. And CC65 gives you that capability right there in, a, uh, in the Commander X16. So how, 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 do you, uh, how do you actually get this to work? Well, if we look here on my uh, GitHub, you'll see the repo I have here, x16 hello cc65. And in fact, you'll even see the presentation that you saw earlier is in that. But I also have this big readme file in there, and it goes through all the steps that you need to get your environment set up. I'm not going to go into the details of that, but it does show you how to do it in both Windows and in a, uh, a, a specific you know, Debian, Ubuntu, Linux uh, environment. But uh, you can, if you have something different, you can see from this just how simple it is, especially from the uh, Linux steps. It's not too different to do something like that for, say, Mac or another Linux flavor, Unix. <clears throat> so you can go through all that. And uh, finally, you can just, you'll, what you'll get are uh, make files that you'll see here. You just go into that hello C, uh, x16 hello cc65. Once you have uh, cc65 itself and, and GNU make uh, already installed on your system, you go ahead and run make. And it runs three different make files within that. We'll talk, runs a top level make file and then goes into each of these three subdirectories. And we can see here in the middle, it went into this uh, uh, and built hello C into uh, hello C.prg with a single call to CL65. Now, CL65 is a combination compiler assembler linker. 
and it, it, it's, it's sort of a, a shell for the whole tool chain so that within a single line you can build an application if you need to. And that's a, exactly what this did right here. And so if we look here, that uh, within C we have uh, hello.prg, it's in there. And so if we go into that C directory, there it is, hello c.prg. And I can go ahead and run the emulator and I can load that right in here. Hello c.prg, whoops, I always wanted to do the .org. And there it is, and I can run it. And oh, there I get my hello world, all in caps, but oh, it just turned everything else to lowercase. Well, because you're in C land now and uh, C expects you to have a mixed case environment. So what CC65 does is it automatically, when you're making a C application, automatically changes you to that mixed case mode. So you don't have access to the full uh, Petsky library, uh, the full, full Petsky character, graphical character set. You get the uppercase and lowercase mixed in. So you're printing out that uppercase, but then everything else turns to lowercase. So it's okay, and, and it works, and so there you go. And you've got a, a very nice, uh, simple way of doing Hello World. Well, that's great, but let's take a look at what did that actually build? Hello C.PRG. It's, oh, it's only 2K, right? That's not too bad. Well, from a 70-byte C file, it built a 2K program. That's a lot of memory when we're talking about having only 38K available. So uh, obviously a lot of that is boilerplate, but that's pretty much you're gonna you're gonna be eating that uh, two plus k at least with it, it doing something in C. So let's take a look at now if I want to do it in assembly. So here is the assembly version. Now of course you don't have printf <laughs> in assembly. And what you can see here is I am including, let me just keep this pending tab here. Of course, I use Atom. If you've uh, seen some of my other videos, I really like Atom. Uh, it's, if you've used VS Code, it's a very similar program to that. And here you can see it. The first thing I do is I include x16.inc. And that's this file. This is right in that repo. And here I define a whole bunch of addresses that you need for uh, the Commander X16 and this little uh, nice macro down here for uh, setting some uh, data into uh, Vera for setting up the address registers. And that's it, it's not a whole lot to it, but it, it's uh, really helpful to get everything, including here the uh, kernel subroutine. So I got all the addresses for all the different functions in the kernel, not just the original Commodore kernel, but here, uh, a lot of things that are, are new to the Commander X16. But we don't have to get into any of that. What we do have to do is call chr out, which is a character out where you're just loading something in the A register and you're putting it out. So what I do in this program is like, all right, I want to have hello world. Well, the the way that CA65 works is that these uh, string constants are uh, they're they're mapped in a very specific way to work with Petsky so that your uh, your character constants if it's a lowercase in the code it'll come out in uh, uppercase uh, when you're in uppercase mode and what we want to do is sort of force that in uppercase mode so that we don't get that that screen going into that funny mode afterwards. We want to just keep it in uppercase because that, for our purposes, we don't need lowercase. In fact, we may want to have access to the full Petsky uh, graphics character set. So what I do is I load in the A register this, uh, this uppercase uh, special character. So when we output the 8E character out, that forces you into that uppercase mode. And then we go ahead and we print that message. So I use a zero pointer. I, I've got here in x16.inc, I've got these uh, sort of scratch zero pointer registers so that you don't have to hard code any addresses into your program. And so I'm just using that to 
input message, this, uh, this string. So it's uh, pointing right here to the beginning of that string. And then using the Y register to do an uh, indirect uh, index into that. So what I go through, I go through the loop and I'm using n message minus message here, using some of uh, this nice assembler capability to uh, sort of programmatically come up with a, uh, a, a direct value to actually put in the Y register or to compare the Y register to. And so this will give me the, the length of this string. And so until this will keep uh, looping into, into this code right here, uh, CA65 has what are called uh, cheap locals. So if you start it with an at symbol, then it's not something that's exported and you can reuse the same labels over and over again in between the exportable labels that don't have, start with the at symbol. So here I go in and it's like, all right, well, if, uh, if the Y register is already at the length of the message, it's just going to go right to done. Otherwise, it's going to load the next character in that string into the A register and then call uh, CHR out and uh, print that character to the uh, current cursor. And then it increments the Y register and goes back again to the top of the loop and keeps doing this over and over again until we increment y all the way to being this value, n message minus message, which is, of course, the length of that string. And then finally, uh, we'll branch to done once we've reached the end of that string, and then it will print a new line out. Uh, of course, you see here a new line, it's a little different on uh, in Petsky than it is in ASCII. It's a, a hex zero D character for a new line. And so we go and print that out so that our ready prompt will come in underneath it. And so now we'll go up into that ASM directory where we've already built it. It's hello asm.prg. And to make things a little faster, I'll just say, all right, we'll just load that right in. And then I'll run it. And there it is, hello world. And it didn't change anything. It didn't. It, it's it stayed where we wanted it to be. Well, that's pretty convenient, isn't it? That's a nice, quite, quite little program. So that when we didn't see, it took over 2K. Where is it here? Ah, 63 bytes. That's how much you really need to do. Hello world. And in fact, we'd save a few if we didn't do this uh, forcing uppercase at the beginning, but just to be sure we're doing it anyway. And there it is. That's, that's really what it should take for the X16 to do Hello World. And uh, there, you, there you have it. That's pretty much it. And that's based on code where we have 505 bytes for Hello ASM and 5K in that ink file. It all boils down to just those 63 bytes. That's the real power of assembly right there. You're getting it super small and it's super fast. But say that, oh, there, I, wanna, I wanna use a bunch of C. And so maybe, yeah, maybe I don't wanna have the overhead of the, the standard IO library in there, but I wanna do a bunch of mathy stuff in C that's just gonna be too hard to do in assembly. Or, or, or just some stuff that I already have existing C code for. I just want to port that in there, and I don't want to have to deal with coming up with ways of doing that in assembly. Because, yeah, assembly is kind of hard to do. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than the X16 or with the 65 CO2, but there are other, other assembly languages are easier. It is easy in that it's a limited uh, instruction set. It's not quite a proper risk-reduced instruction set, but it's pretty, it's pretty small and tight. But that also makes it difficult to do things where it requires a lot of uh, instructions to do some basic stuff. So let's say I want to take that and here in my main uh, C, I just want to call a function that will print hello. So here you notice I, I don't do an include standard IO in the C. I'm just declaring an external function called underscore hello. And then I just, my main, all it does is it calls it. Then of course, obviously in a real application, it would go and do other things. But then it calls, a, uh, then I have a new version of hello.asm that looks very similar to the last one, but you notice it doesn't have 
all the stuff at the beginning, this .org, 80D, these segments. These are This is the window dressing that's required uh, in order for you to be loadable from basic. But in this case, I'm just going to be linking in to an existing application. So I don't need all that. I just need to say, all right, uh, I'm going to still include this uh, x16.inc, so I have access to that, uh, basically the chr out, uh, the actual address for that, because that's all I really need out of it. And then I need to export a, uh, fun a function, and I call it underscore underscore hello. So it's I have <laughs> an additional underscore that I need uh, on the assembly side. And so I'm exporting a, a symbol called hello, which I know is a function. And that's why within the C code, I refer to it as a function. And then here it is. Here's hello. And I, I still have these other uh, other identifiers here, these, these other symbols. But they're not exported. They're effectively local now to this assembly code. And so I can't, in, in, the, in the C part, not without guessing at what the address is going to be. I can't muck around with the contents of this string. I'm going to be uh, forced to print out, have it print out whatever it wants to print out, uh, which is good. It's, it's providing a, a little protection there. And so here it is. Uh, instead of start, like we had before, where we were at the beginning, we were jumping to start uh, over this code, uh, over the data, we don't have to jump over that. We're just going directly to hello. And then we're doing the exact same routine and with an RTS at the end. But now this RTS is just a normal function return. It's not going back to uh, basic. It's going back to the C program. And then the C program will return. The main function will return. And then that will go back to basic. And so when we built that up here in the mixed directory, here we created this hello mix.prg. So we're going to go ahead and uh, load that into the emulator and run that. And there it is again. Hello world. Now you probably noticed. Look again. I run. You saw the little butterfly twitch there. Well, that's because it did for a split second go into that lowercase mode, which all C applications do. So you can see it's still in C land for an appreciable amount of time before it's able to go off into assembly and actually do what it wants to do. Uh, but then at the end of the day, you actually get hello world uh, in all caps and it doesn't change the, the character set. We're able to force it back into the full uh, graphics Petsky character set. And so that's pretty cool. So we were able to do that. So what did that end up giving us? Well, now we got this program. Hey, well, it's a whole order of magnitude smaller than doing it all in C, even though it's not a whole lot less code on C. Hey, I'm doing a printf and I'm doing just a function call. Well, by, by circumventing all of the uh, C libraries, not having to link all that in there, it made something much, much tighter. And so that, those are some of the, the different strategies you can take in building your application, is to understand that there's a cost of doing things in C, there's a cost in using libraries, there's a, a lot of uh, hidden costs that are in there, so you can mitigate a lot of that and still be able to have code that is easier to deal with on the C side. And then some things are just going to be easier to do with assembly, and maybe at the end of the day, you decide that, you know what, it's not worth doing C and I'm just going to do everything in assembly. And CA65, CC65 toolchain, it makes it real easy to do all that. So I would definitely recommend you go off to my GitHub, you go through this whole readme file, you clone hello CC65, and you go ahead and uh, get all the tools that you need. You get CC65 itself, and then you know, start reading up on stuff. Uh, I'll link this in here too. This is the, uh, this Wikibooks, uh, this open source documentation for 6502 uh, instruction set. There's uh, other, uh, you know, resources out there for the additional 
methods that are in 65CO2, but in terms of understanding how the different uh, addressing modes and things work, this works out really well for me. I've got this other uh, this other link that I use, it's a nice simple page that shows how the different kernel functions work. There's a couple of errors in it, but that's okay. Uh, at any rate, it's still a very good uh, uh, reference to understand, hey, what, what are these, uh, these uh, different methods used? And so between this and the uh, X16 documentation, you can get a, a good idea of uh, how you need to be able to do these different things. Like here you can see, once we get down in here, there's that CHR out. Input, A is the byte to write, and then you write it and you're done. Real easy. So that's it. That's pretty much all there is to it. So if you have any questions, you know, you can feel free to hit me up on here. I'm uh, always on the Commander X16 website and the Facebook group. And, uh, but I would certainly recommend that if, if you're having trouble getting started, just go ahead and use this repo, use that as the basis of your own project and just get started start coding start hacking away start just experimenting and seeing what you can do and i think you'll be surprised with how much you really can do even if you just limit yourself to assembly there's a, a whole lot that can be done and you can create a, some really wonderful software so i i thank you and if you haven't already please subscribe uh even set you know, hit that bell for the notifications because I'm going to have another video coming out soon that's an update on my channel and the, the game I'm working on. And so I, I hope to see you again here real soon. Bye-bye.